Hello and welcome to a remake video of one of my earlier videos on how to become Marshall. The reason for this video is because I got a lot of uh, kind of input from people and obviously uh, from re-watching it, you know, of the audio being really bad of the background music, so it's making it hard for people to listen. So I've decided to break the video down and redo it again. So as you can see, we have just been offered the Marshall ship from the King. Now here's the thing, when the King offers you this position, is a kind of take it or leave it kind of situation. He, he is giving you a title. If you accept said title, you will gain land and gifts easy and quicker. If you decide to reject it, you will not get these gifts. You will not be getting your request of land for a good long time. There will be a big period where you will not be in the favor of the king. So you need to keep this in mind if or when you do get offered the marshalship for a kingdom. To gain the position, or at least be offered the position, you need to have a high renown in the kingdom. You need to have good relations, not only with just the lords, you need to have a really good relationship with the king. So you need to be able to do quests for the king, for the, you know, the lords early on. You need to be doing things whether or not you're holding feasts, whether or not you're helping them in battles, or getting them released from as a prisoner in battles. All these things are going to add up because the renown is a kind of measuring tool in this game of where you sit in that kingdom. The higher your renown, the more kind of uh, justified, the more kind of like higher up status you are in the court. So the higher you are, the better. The lower you are, the more kind of frowned upon you're going to look. That's why it's harder to gain some land sometimes because you are not seen as a big enough lord in the kingdom. Now, if you're sat there and thinking, how have I not been offered the martial ship yet? I have a high renown. I have good relations with everyone. Honestly, it could just be the timing at the moment. The timing in your kingdom. What events are going on in your kingdom? Or, for example, is the current marshal a favourite of the king? A favourite of all the lords? Is he not busy enough, pretty much? Because the only reason you would then reject or give up the martial ship is if you want to go and get married... Um, hold a feast or pretty much go off and go and do your own thing so honestly it comes down to timing sometimes and obviously your levels compared to the other lords so bear with it stick with it you may or may not get off of it sooner than you think but here's the thing you need to actually really consider during or even before you accept before you accept it whether or not you are ready to take it because obviously if you come to a war, you need to be the one leading the troops around, leading parties around, going and taking territory. If you're not ready for that yet, or if you've got other things you need to do, as in you need to get married, you need to hold feasts, you need to do this, that and the other, or go and raid more places, buy yourself, gain more money, or you know build businesses, this isn't a job for you yet. The kingdom will depend on you to lead the armies around to take territory against other kingdoms in wartime. So you need to think about this. But also if you have accepted it and you are quite far into uh, several wars, you've already won several wars and whatnot, and it is now you think now it's the time to actually give it up because I need to do X, Y, and Z. Once again, you just have to take that into consideration. There will be slight negative, you know, relations from it. But from being the marshal, you may have gained enough positive relations from being marshal to counteract this anyway. Like I said before, the benefits though of being martial is that you can get land easier. So if you go and take a castle, you go and start that battle for a castle and you request said castle or town or fief, there is a higher chance you'll get it. There's a higher chance the lords will not turn against you as the right hand man of the king that you, if you want said territory, you will get said territory. So you need to keep this in mind. Also, you will get a slightly bigger party, party size boost. So that's a good thing. So you just need to keep in mind there are good, positive areas to be becoming martial. Now to form a war party, as you've just seen just then, you go to someone in your party screen, click on them and ask them to go and send a message around to all the, all the nobles, all the lords of the land to 
get them to bring their troops and form a war party. Use them, this war party to go and take territory. So if there is a heavily garrisoned town, you create a war party to go and take that. Obviously, the more troops you have in this war party, the easier, or at least the less troops may die from the engagement. So having a high relations with said lords of the land will also mean that they come follow you and the less likely they will to be bored and abandon you from said siege. Because if their lands then start getting attacked, they may want to leave to go and defend their lands. Or if they don't think you're doing enough, they may just leave full stop. So the higher the relations, the better for yourself. But please bear in mind, sometimes the timings of calling together the Lords to create a war party isn't always favorable because obviously if you've asked for everyone to come to you with all their troops, they're no longer patrolling their lands. So their lands are now open to attack. So you need to balance it between creating a war party to take territory so then you're forcing the other faction to bring their Lords back home or, you know, if you need to leave the army dispersed so that everyone can carry on defending patrolling. You just need to make, you know, way up where the war is. Where is it in balance? Have you killed enough troops defensively as a kingdom to then go on the attack? Or have you gone on the attack aggressive enough to force the other kingdom defensively and keep catching lords out single so then you can kill all their troops and make that kingdom very weak to being able to respond to counter any of your sieges? You've just got to keep this all in mind tactically during your time as a marshal, and I hope you enjoy. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this improved audio version of how to become a marshal. Uh, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment if you haven't already done so. I am also going to be potentially doing some Mountain Blade uh, modded gameplay soon, so potentially either uh, the Game of Thrones mod or the Lord of Rings mod. So please keep an eye out for that. Please keep enjoying the content and like I say, I hope this is a better version of the earlier video and that you enjoy it easier and you understand everything I said. If you've got any comments, questions or anything like that or anything you want me to cover in the game, please put it below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.